All right, well, welcome back. This is part three of a video series on creating a song out of backing tracks in Ableton Live. And we've exported a bunch of files out of Logic for the song Burn by Ellie Goulding. And I have my computer mounted to our file share volume, which has our Ableton song database, which is called Ableton Loops and Clicks. So first, I'm just going to take my Burn audio folder and drag it into our special songs folder. And it's organized alphabetically here. And you're going to want to make sure that you have Ableton 8 installed on your computer. And if you currently only have version 9, that's not a problem. You can easily download version 8 from the Ableton website using your serial number. And the reason I say use 8 is because at this point in time anyway, which is August 2014, most of our stage computers still only have version 8. So if you create your song in 9, then version 8 will not be able to open it. All right, so in the Ableton Loops and Clicks folder, I am going to find this Weekend Setlist Project folder, and I'm going to make a copy of it. And I don't need to rename it because I'm going to delete this file eventually, but it's kind of going to be the file I'm going to work in to create my song. So I'm going to go into the project folder here and open up the .als project file in Ableton 8. First thing I want to do in Ableton here is open up the preferences and just check some of the settings to make sure that they're set for doing the thing that we want to do here. So you want to go under the Record Warp Launch tab and set your Loop Warp Short Samples to Auto. Also make sure Auto Warp Long Samples is set to Off and that Default Warp Mode is set to Complex. Also under the File Folder tab, you're going to, going to go down here to the bottom to collect files and export and set that to never. Next thing I want to do is go over to this right hand column here and this is where Ableton has its scenes and songs. So I just want to right click or control click in just any one of these blank slots, it doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to type in the name and other information that Ableton needs. So the format you're going to use for this is to type the name first so just call it burn. Then I'm going to put a semicolon. Then I'm going to type the BPM. Then put another semicolon. And lastly, I'm going to put the time signature. So I'm going to use the format 4 underscore 4 for 4 4 time signature. Now I'm just going to go back to the name and highlight it or select rename. And I'm just going to copy the name of it so that I can use that later. I also want to press this triangle here, um, which will play. It will, won't be playing anything at this point, but what it's going to be doing is setting Ableton's global tempo to the tempo of the song. Now I want to open the Ableton browser, which is on the left-hand side, by clicking this arrow here. And I'm going to navigate to the file share volume and locate my burn audio folder. So now I'm going to right click on that folder called A through E and I'm going to choose Create Project. So when I do that, Ableton is going to create a project here at the bottom. It's called Unnamed Project or Untitled. And I'm just going to paste the name that I copied earlier and then I'm going to type Project after it and press Enter. Now I'm just going to drag the Burn Audio folder into this new project folder. Alright, so now I'm ready to import my audio files into my Ableton project here. And all I'm going to do is just click and drag them. And I'll start with a click. reference file, and finally the loops. So hopefully in the bounce process I figured out where each loop will go here. 
So remember, I have six channels for percussion, which will go out of outputs one and two. I have four slots for synth, which will go out of three and four, and four channels for auxiliary, which go out of five and six. All right, so I got all my clips dragged in, and now I want to make the necessary parameter changes in clip view for each of the clips. So I can just start here right with the click down or the downbeat clip, and I'm going to open that by clicking on the clip, and it, the view should open up down below here, and if it doesn't, just click on this tab at the bottom right of the screen. And the first thing I want to do is turn on warp. And warp mode will allow me to change the tempo and the keys of our tracks. And you're going to want to see that the SEG BPM matches the song tempo. It usually should, but if it doesn't, then you're going to want to click on this yellow box here, and it will allow you to change the tempo. All right, so now I'm going to change the start point of the clip if I need to do that. So by default, because we bounce the loops with two bars before the downbeat of the song, we have a full two measure count off. So over here at the start point, it says um, starting at measure one, beat one, and like the first sixteenth note. So that's what it defaults to. So if we want something shorter than that, say only a one bar count off, then you would set the start point to bar two. If you want, say, one and a half measures, so it would start right on the three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you would set it to come in at measure one, but on beat three. Because we turned on complex mode for our default warp algorithm and preferences, that's what um, all these clips are going to default to when we turn on warp mode in their clip settings. So I found that complex will pretty much work for any kind of audio material. Uh, but I still prefer beat mode for anything that's highly rhythmic and percussive. So for the click track here, I'm going to turn turn on beats. And I can also go down where it says transient here to this menu and choose quarter note, since that's the type of rhythm of the click track. And if neither complex or beat mode do the trick, there are some other options um, that you can also experiment with uh, to see if they make the audio sound better. And again, the only time that this will become a factor is when you start either tempo stretching, either speeding up or slowing down the tempo of the song, or changing the key of these clips to transpose the song to a different key. That's when you're really going to need to um, maybe experiment with this warp algorithm. Otherwise, right now we're not changing the tempo, we're using the original tempo, and we're going to use the original key. We won't need to really adjust these settings. Other things to do here in Clip View, sometimes loop is turned on when you turn on warp, and you're not going to want that, so you're going to want to make sure that loop is off. And also, sometimes this right ending point here, this flag here, is shorter than what it should be, so just drag that all the way out to the end. Otherwise, the clip will end kind of midstream. Now I can go through all my clips one by one and make similar settings in the clip view properties. So going over here to click up, I'm going to turn on warp. The tempo looks good. And I've decided that I wanted a one bar count off for this song instead of a two bar count off. So I make my start point at the second measure. And so on and so forth. All right, we're almost done here. All I need to do is listen through it and spot check it a little bit. I can One, two, use the timeline as kind of like a fast forward and rewind. So if I click along this horizontal strip up here, it'll let me do that. If I press this uh, little square with an S in it, that's to solo an individual channel. And so whatever loops or clips are on that channel, it will solo that. And I can make any last minute volume changes to the individual loops. So when I bounced it, I bounced it at the levels of where I wanted it in the mix. But let's just say, for example, that after listening to everything again with fresh ears, um, I think that my main synth part here is too loud compared to everything else. So I can go into Clip View and change the gain to taste. 
Um, and what you don't want to do is you don't want to change the channel strip volume fader because you need to remember that other songs will be using the same channel strip for their loops as well. One, two, three, four. After I'm satisfied with the way everything's sounding, I can write in the key of the song in, in the name here. And lastly, all I need to do is drag this scene into the project folder that I created in the browser. And that's it. I can go ahead and delete that weekend project folder that I created th at the beginning. So now I can easily create my weekend set by dragging into it songs from the database. And I can make another copy of that same weekend set list project. And I'll rename it this time to the date of my worship service or my gig. And I'll just open up my Ableton browser and find the songs and drag them into the open scene slots. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Three, four. All right, that's about it. This is Jeff Culp from Lives Changed by Christ Church, and thanks for watching.